half enough, the video ended up being more of a tribute to your fans. It was kind of a twist on the lyrics. That's right. I was very, very happy when we came up with the uh, concept for that video that we would uh, kind of dedicate it to the fans and that um, we shot a lot of it during fanfare. And I think we did it in um, Houston, Texas and Tyler, Texas was where we did the concert video uh, footage of it. But we shot a lot through fanfare, and a lot of my fans have come and said, saw, saw me on your video, you know. <laughs> so it's, um, it was neat. And, and, the, and the fans still, still like the song at the concert, I think, because they know it's a tribute to them. So. Was the first video that you were actually in, uh, was it Homecoming 63 with Keith Whitley? No. Actually, no? the first video that I was in was a Statler Brothers video called Only You. You caught me. I didn't know that. Yes. And uh, it was... <laughs> It was uh, me and Lane Brody and Robin Lee, Robin Lee. and um, Rebecca Holman. And all of us girls were paired up with one of the Statler brothers. Uh -huh. And Harold was my boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> in, this, uh, in this video. And we, we did it out at Opryland. And it was a lot of fun. The Statler brothers are great guys. And that was like my first, um, my first encounter with videos. We've got to take a look at this. The Homecoming 63 then was probably the second clip that you were a part of. That's right. That Keith was uh, actually the only you video was right before Keith and I got married and the Homecoming 63 video was shot the day we got back from our honeymoon. Did you go back to Keith's hometown to do that? No, actually I think we did it all in Franklin, uh, Tennessee. Did it surprise you when Garth Brooks used a clip of that for I thought it his was video? wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. Um, surprised? No, I was just honored that uh, that he you know, was going to include myself. I knew he, he loved Keith um, and still does, but I was very honored to be, you know, a part of that video because it was one of my favorite videos. You wrote the song, If You Came Back From Heaven, about Keith Whitley, didn't you? I did. And, and you know, I think right when, um, when Keith passed away, everyone was expecting uh, me to write this real morbid song and, and you know, that has to do with all that stuff. And five years later, I'm sitting at home and um, all by myself and really just wondered to myself, you know, what would it be like if, if he did come back? I mean, would I know what to say? And would we just pick up where we left off? And, and I just started writing it down. And, and the melody came as quick as the words came. And... Um, I called my producer and sang it to him over the phone. I remember it had been real warm that week that we were getting ready to shoot the video. And the day of the video, it turned freezing cold. <laughs> and they had me standing in this stream, and I just got over pleurisy. And they wanted me to get just soaking wet in this, uh, in this stream. And then they wanted to use a rain machine outside to where I'm standing in the rain getting soaked. And I said, you know, I just got over <laughs> almost pneumonia here and, and you want me to get wet. So it was one of those video shoots where it was just awful behind the scenes. We're very familiar with Lori Morgan, the singer, and we're becoming more and more familiar with Lori Morgan, the songwriter. And I understand that has a lot to do with a friend of yours. That's right. Um, when, when we decided to do uh, the I Guess You Had to Be There video with, with the treatment that we had for it, um, they asked me what gentleman I would like to use in the video. And I said, how about Chris Christopherson? So I've always wanted to meet him, you know, and, and uh, my publicist, who's also um, Chris's publicist, um, said, okay. And I thought, yeah, right, I'm sure they're going to be able to get Chris. And he agreed to do it. He flew in from Hawaii to New York City to, uh, to do the video up there with us. And it was really fate. Of course, they said, you know, this is Chris, this is Lori. And, and he shook my hand back. And, and they said, now we want to see what y'all look like kissing. Oh, gosh. Just then. And I was like, wait a minute. I don't even know this guy. I mean, and, and you're already starting off the... The kissing thing for the video, which uh, you know I just totally hated to do, but <laughs> I went on and did it. But anyway, it was great. He was a great guy, and and definitely a um, um, 
a big inspiration. He said, you are a poet, Lori Morgan. And he said, you are a fool not to put your songs on your album. The video was shot in New York. Is some of that in Central Park? Uh, well, yeah, all of it, except the, uh, the um, apartment scene where I'm on the phone. Uh, it was all shot in Central Park. Hello, honey. Lori Morgan is a second-generation country star. Her late father, George Morgan, originated such classics as Candy Kisses and Room Full of Roses. Your father was a star of the Grand Ole Opry. In, uh, he, had, he was an artist in the late 40s and early 50s. Did he ever give you good advice? I'm sure he did, good advice for the music industry. You know, I think the, the main thing that my dad, the, the advice that he gave me was not so much what he said verbally, but it was a lot of what I witnessed by hanging around him. My dad and I were like inseparable um, up to the day he passed away. And, and I went to a lot of his recording sessions with him and a lot of his road shows on the road and, and watched him at the Opry and how he was with people and how he was in interviews and, and certain things. And so I think a lot of the, what I learned was was by his actions. You were the youngest inductee into the Grand Ole Opry? I was. When you were 24? That's right, well, last year. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Anyway. Wasn't that I was, way. and um, that was a, a great honor for me. Trainwreck of Emotion is your first video as an artist. And you're playing guitar in this. It was actually my first video released. My first video that I, that I did was Dear Me. But train wreck of emotion, uh, we did them in two days. We did Dear Me first, and then we did the next day. We did train wreck of emotion. So you just saved it, right? So um, Dear Me was actually the first one I did, but train wreck was the first one released. Didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> well, train wreck of emotion shows you playing guitar. How long have you been playing? I've been playing guitar since I was about thirteen years old. Really? Yeah. And um, did you learn from your father? Well, actually, my dad bought me my guitar, but I taught myself. This video, obviously, you're at a train station. Right, obviously. I was at uh, <laughs> Union Station down here in Nashville. And um, the funny thing about it, I, w I worked all day long on this video. And um, finally, toward the end of the evening, I was looking around, finally, up in the <laughs> rafters and whatever. And it says, this building condemned. <laughs> and I was like, why is this condemned and why are we here? <laughs> And they said, well, it's due to the pigeons, the pigeon disease or whatever it was. I said, and I've been down here walking around <laughs> and all this stuff all day long, and now you're telling me that it's condemned for health hazards? You know so what? It's all like day long I did the video with this stuff all around me, and, and needless to say, I've never gone back. We're lying in the rubble, cinder smoke and ash, our hearts still pounding. From the impact of the crash, I can see tomorrow's headlines. Heart broke from blind devotion. We're just another victim of a train wreck of emotion. <laughs> now you know why we watch videos instead of singing around here. We were talking about Dear Me, which you said is your very first video that you did. And it's white on white, which sometimes is very dangerous with the camera, but that turned out so Beautiful. Now, there's, a, there's actually a, a little story behind that video. That whole video was a mistake. Um, <laughs> it actually was um, bad film that they had used. And it was not intended to look the way it looked. I actually had on white jeans and a, um, a turquoise sweatshirt. And something went wrong with the, the film during the filming of it but we had to rush to get the video out. So they kept it that way and made it look very soft. So it was actually a, a mistake. It was a great mistake. Yeah, it turned out really a, one of those great mistakes. You don't see any pattern here with your videos. They're all mistakes, <laughs> every one of them. If you could read the The video for He Talks To Me is actually a clip from a television show, isn't it? Right, we taped that in, um, I think it was Austin City Limits, mm -hmm. and that was my first time 
to do Austin City Limits. Words could never say how much I If you had to go through all your videos and pick a favorite, which one would it be? I think my favorite video that I've done, I actually have two, if I can say that. You can say um, two. Dear Me is probably my favorite softest video um, that I really felt relaxed and good in. My, my other favorite video that I've done that actually didn't take off too well for me was My Night to Howl. And it was um, probably the funnest video that I've done. Howl. Where's the Marble Palace in my favorite things? The video? It was actually a, um, a, one of the court buildings in New York. That's what I assumed. Yeah, and that uh, was beautiful. But that, you know, I, when you asked me um, earlier what a couple or one of my favorite videos were that I should have said that because that really was uh, a fantasy come true for me raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens bright copper kettles and, and video session two of your videos feature classic country songs crying time and uh, a picture of me without you were you fan, a fan of these songs from years ago? Crying Time was actually, I had a, uh, a choice of a few songs that were being used for the Beverly Hillbillies soundtrack. And it was one of the choices. Yeah, it won't be long before it's crying time. I've always been a fan of Picture of Me Without You and, and working a couple years on the road back in the early 80s with George Jones, um, I would hear George sing that, you know, every night, and I sang harmony. The video for A Picture of Me Without You is a very classy-looking video. When Jack Cole came to you with the concept for the video, how did he explain it to you? What did he say the concept was going to be? He said, it's, um, I envision this as somewhat looking through a child's eyes which I liked that right away. I didn't even care if he finished the statement. <laughs> um, because I sometimes still, to this day, look at the world through childlike eyes. Imagine. What can you tell me about uh, when you shot the video for We Both Walk? Well, that was um, kind of interesting because it, it changed my whole look. That was... Uh, New haircut. That's right. Haircut. We went downtown and... We went to see a lady named Bev Patterson, and they said, we want a new look for her. And I walked in, and she said, well, big hair's out, so let's do something. And they just started chopping. <laughs> and I said, no, wait a minute, y'all don't understand. You have to uh, trust this, Lori, this is gonna work. And so they gave me that cut, you know, with the, the little wispies and the bangs and everything and, and I'd always curled my hair all my life. I mean I've always, always used a curl and iron or hot rollers or something and um, with this video they went to the long or the short little shaggy look. You had to be very trusty. And I'll never forget the first time I was I was on the road with um, I think I was on tour with Clint Black in Alabama and I was so excited about the video and I went in and I showed it to Clint Black on the bus and he said that's really good, Lori. You look like Peter Pan. For the video, Out of Your Shoes, you go into the studio and we kind of get a glimpse of what it's like in a studio for a minute. Of course, you're in the studio for three minutes there and normally it takes how many hours to do that song? Yeah, I wish three minutes. <laughs> you, normally videos take about 12 hours, but um, uh, that was a strange video too. That was another video that uh, we, did, uh, we did another video on Out of Your Shoes, and it was very storylined. And my best girlfriend, uh, Ruthie, who's now my secretary too, um, was in the video with me. They poofed her hair all up, and they put her in this red dress, and, and I was literally singing to her about this whole song about, I bor you borrowed my favorite dress, I borrowed your best perfume, and it showed us going out for the evening, and, um, I spot this guy from across the room, and but he doesn't notice me, just notices her, and um, they start dancing, and 
Uh, it shows the red dress fall into the floor later on that night, and RCA hated it. They hated the video, <laughs> so it was never released. They wouldn't let us show it, so here's what you get instead. You know, I, I always had a hard time with songs that ended sad, recording them, um, or ended in a negative um, attitude. So with the Watch Me video, you know, it, of course the, the song ends in Watch Me Walk Away. Um, and in the video, I wanted it to be a happy ending. So we had the guy come back, you know, with the flowers. Yet something in red. On the average, how involved are you with the making of the video? Very much so. Um, when I first started off uh, in, in the business and doing videos, and um, I was under the direction so much of other people that I wasn't totally satisfied with the outcome of a lot of the videos. And so um, I asked uh, RCA at the time, I said, you know, can I write the treatment for this video? And let's do it the way I want to do it. And they said, well, what do we got to lose? So I, I ended up writing the, the uh, treatment for the Something in Red video, which we did at the house. And we made it very, um, very literal. We, we just went with a, the storyline right. and, and everything with the song. Something in Red was a, a very meaningful video uh, for me. Do you feel like the acting that you do in your videos has helped with your acting like for your television show, Proud Heart? I definitely think so. I, I think that it prepared me, but it, it definitely, um, I wasn't quite prepared enough. I mean, I, I was prepared as far as the acting part of it went, but I often, I've often wondered, you know, you hear about all these actors and actresses getting this big money to do these movies, and you're like, that's ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. It is, it is really hard work. I mean, it's very time consuming and to turn your emotions off and on so quickly is very draining. And it's very difficult. And Proud Heart, um, you know, was it the tip of the iceberg for me. I mean, I'm hoping that, you know, the, the right motion picture role comes along for me very soon. But until it does, uh, you know, I'll live with, with Proud Heart. So, how you holding up? I'm fine. Were well, you trying to kid? Hell, I'm not fine. I just never felt so alone. Well, now you ain't alone. I just never dreamed of coming home. Dad not being here. Yeah, I know. It was um, a lot of fun for me. It was hard work, but. Uh, you know, it was a, a good little uh, entrance to my acting career. There was a new song released on Lori's Greatest Hits album, and it tells the story of her life. That's next on TNN Video Session. Tell me about the song, I Didn't Know My Own Strength. It's just about women, and um, this woman particularly, being strong. And um, sometimes you, you don't know your own strength. You don't know what you have until you have to use it.